With a production run of 24 years and over 800,000 units produced, the RX-7 has certainly left its mark on the automotive industry. It's also starred in three Fast and Furious movies. And for some people, the rotary engine has become kind of a way of life, like my passenger here. Now, this isn't a stock third generation 1993 RX-7. Those produced 252 horsepower, had two rotors, and weighed 2,800 pounds. Which honestly, for a 2,800 pound car, 252 horsepower for back then is pretty solid. This has a 20B3 rotor from a Mazda Cosmo, an engine that wasn't even available in the United States. It's also got a huge S480 Borg Warner turbo on it, and combined with the love of someone who's slightly psycho, it produces 750 wheel horsepower at 25 PSI. And for a car this late, it freaking rips. So it obviously has its quirks. The car can randomly stall at 30 miles an hour when you're in gear. What made you decide to get a car like this? Why do you love it? And tell me more about the things that are horribly wrong with it. Well, I mean, it started out with, uh, I did have a stock two, uh, second gen, and then I went into a stock third gen, which 255 horsepower at, at the crank was enough at that time. And I just had to keep pushing the envelope. Uh, for most people that get into RX-7s, the three rotor is like the holy grail. Like that is the like the engine that you dream of. That you you try and you try and rationalize how you're going to afford it. And uh, I was very fortunate to come across this car and, and uh, make it my own. And I gutted it to the frame and rebuilt it. This is not a stable car. If, if, if that wasn't obvious in the uh, last while of you reviewing it, this is not an easy car to drive. This is not, not a not a refined vehicle at all. And that, that's honestly what keeps me interested in it, is that it's always got your mind on the drive. You're not you're not wanting to text and drive, you're not wanting to do anything. You are wanting to drive this car. Which is why I went and bought the beginnings of my four rotor, which is the next step. That that's not even an engine that you buy, you have to build the engine itself. And so this is a an obsession, a cult. Rotary is definitely a cult. Um, and uh, I'm a proud, proud member of that. So what are some things you've done that are, I guess, unique? I mean, you have this water injection system for the turbos. You've got your own gauge setups. What, did you have a kind of master plan when you were building the car or did you just wing it and? Well, I do have to clarify that a buddy of mine, Turbo Tommy is his, his nickname. Right. He built the vast majority of this car. Sure. I built the other one. Okay. But he built this one, and we've been friends for quite a while. And, and so some of this wasn't my vision, and that's why when I go to build the four rotor, I'm going to be putting my vision into this. I put the water injection system into it. I rewired the entire system. Every wire has been modified. I'm an electric, you know, electronic guy. So that was my vision. Um, the car wouldn't start consistently. Now it dies, you know, every so often, but it wouldn't start. And so stuff like that, where the electrical. Uh, Connection just wasn't there. That's my that's my love. Yeah, I mean, you did a good job with that because the tack and the speedo don't work. So <laughs> <laughs> electronics are killing it. Streamline. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the tack on a '93 RX-7 um, is actually a common problem with them as they get to this age. Solder joints heat and uh, cool and break. So when do you drive this car? I mean, it, it's pretty rough to be a daily driver. You yeah. got a CTSV. Yeah, so this, this car is driven in short, insane bursts of, of speed, insane bursts of moments of speed. This this is something that, you know, is a drag car, uh, which is one of the things I've always had a, a difficult time accepting. This car is, uh, the RX-7 was 50-50 weight balance, the RX-7 yeah. was beautiful handling. This has neither of those. <laughs> and so, it, even though it keeps the rotary spirit, it's ruined the, I would say, the Japanese spirit of what this car was meant to be. And so, uh, it has a weird spot where you take it to the drag strip, you can drive it on the street, but you're, you're just always tempted to fire off the two-step and do stupid shit with the car. Yeah. yeah, it is interesting. You expect with a small car like this that it would handle extremely well, but with those tires and the power it's putting up, it's much less Tokyo drift and a lot more hold on for dear life as the boost kicks in. Because yeah. <laughs> it tracks all over the road. Yes. So this car, as you stated before, does 750 to the wheels. 
it's a very unstable 750 <laughs> and that's something that I intend to change having you know building a ground a car from the ground up yeah so the four rotor first of all is designed to do about 1200 to the wheels so almost you know almost doubling what this does um, and do it in a very grandiose style yeah to show that rotary you know isn't necessarily the the butt of all the jokes of reliability that you can reliably put down that sort of power and keep coming back for more. The problem is, is that it's extremely expensive to do that. So uh, I'm going to be filming the whole build series in, in efforts to help me fund uh, the over $100,000 build I'm going to be doing. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, 1,200 wheel horsepower is absolutely insane. I just drove a car that had a little bit more than that, but it weighed significantly more than 2,800 pounds. Right, right. And it had all-wheel drive, so a rear-wheel drive car with that kind of power, it's, that is going to be a death trap. Yes. A, a fun <laughs> death trap. <laughs> My goal is to make the car legendary. You know, like, you think of, like, uh, the farm truck, or you think of, like, Murder Nova, or those, those cars that have names. I want to have a car that has a name. Now, I'm, I, I suck at naming my cars, but I want to have a car that people know, even just the car. That's that's what that car is going to be. Yeah. Hopefully, it's I survived. So after the build's done, you don't wrap it around a tree. <laughs> you got a tombstone. I've been really loving driving this car. Obviously, if you try to drive it on a daily basis, it'd annoy the shit out of you. Yes. There's a lot of things wrong with it, but like you said, it, it makes it really exciting when at any moment the car can go completely sideways or it'll stall on you or it won't go into any of the gears. Fifth gear doesn't work on the car. I have no idea how fast I'm going. This truck's tailing me. I swear I'm going the speed limit, but <laughs> it's certainly a lot of fun. And thank you so much for letting me drive your, uh, your baby. So it was my pleasure, man. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Like always, please browse our channel and subscribe. Subscribe to Rob Dom's channel, obviously. He's going to be ramping up the videos. Hopefully there's some sweet stuff coming out. I'm excited for that. So yeah. you guys should be as well. Look forward to seeing you next video.